okay, uh, the enough of the talk. And uh, as I always say, let's show me the code. Here is the three, four code I will show you, I will use in this whole tutorial. First is the bash RC, which is the environment uh, um, setup for my uh, my ECS leak machine. And I just use that for convenience. Certainly that's not your production setup. It won't be that simple, okay? And I will use two SQL uh, statement, uh, SQL file here. One is this Rosebar SQL, which is for the create the popular table in my SQL. And that's the query that the SQL, which is just the, uh, the SQL query I will use. I just want to put in there so I can easy to copy paste during this tutorial orientation. The last one is a draw a single draw a file uh, that contains the whole application logic here. And I will talk about this logic while I show you the code. I already write it, so I will not take your time to see me type in, slowly type in all the code here. Okay, let's start here. Okay. Now you see my, my terminal, which is the terminal that's on my Mac. What I will do is I will connect uh, to uh, my ECS on uh, SSH connection to my, uh, my ECS machine in Singapore region. Okay, I will use... Uh... Okay, now I'm logging in. The first, as we show, we will show you this file. Okay. Um, it's very simple because I just clear up everything else. So one thing is I need to set up my class path really to make sure uh, my Java uh, compiler and the Java application can access the jar file here. I already pre-installed my Java uh, compiler on this machine, by the way, and also pre-installed uh, my SQL client uh, on this uh, ECS machine. Okay. And uh, this uh, for the, so this, we had talked about the class path for the jar dependence files. And this is the I, uh, aliens I set up so that I can connect to uh, my my SQL uh, server on command line of this uh, ECS machine, and that to save me some trouble, I do put in the Redis URL and the, the my SQL uh, uh, URL here, and certainly I have my database username, user uh, database password here, and my database name is my test. So this is this um the file for the uh, environment. Okay, creating here. And the next one, let me go to my code. By the way, this is the class pass I just show you. I just want to show you I have the jar here. And I do have some of, sorry, this is here. I have this rosebar one. I'm show you the code here. So it's very simple. I will drop this rosebar table here if it already exists. And I'll create it, the first column, the date that happened on the game day, the winner, the opponents, which you know, I don't want to use the name loser here. So I do copy all the data. The data is come from the Wikipedia. And since I'm doing that manually, I'm just only have the past 30 games, uh, the data here. And the whole rules about actually have been playing, I think for probably more than a hundred years already. So this is the file. Quit here. And, um, I will show you the next file. Okay, here we go. Actually, this is for the copy paste purpose. So, I don't know what's going on here. Seems uh, my screen doesn't work very well. I don't know why, but okay. 
still helpful to show how the result. <laughs> no, I'm not typing this. It just uh, happened here. So these are the queries I will use, and I will later copy paste it, okay, to my console. And uh, this is just uh, to fetch different of the data from this table. Okay, the last one is the code ready cache drawer, and that's the application. Certainly, for your real world, that application will be much more complex there. But now we only demonstrate how to set up the connections and how to retrieve the cache and refresh the cache. Okay. This is the top of the file. You can see that it's we get one jar in the in the JD IDs there. That is for the drawer Redis clan. And uh, this is for the uh MySQL connectors or the Java that uh Java that SQL and uh, the Java that utility UT is actually come from Java directly. And then this is the come from the JSON jar. Okay, that's pretty much what I need. So basically here, we already talk about where it's running and the environment. So I'm not going to go through this. So we have one class, which is the class is just the drawer, uh, the Redis cache. And we do have a static uh, method here, the whole method it's to get the result from MySQL and it pass in the connectors uh, and the query string. So basically, this is a very simple uh, draw example code how to retrieve some result uh, uh, from this uh, query result. And basically, we already assume we have a connection that passing in, and we have the statement which is the query, and uh, so we have a result set which is by actual the query, and also we grab the metadata of the uh, of the statement here. And uh, so because of our metadata, we know how many number of column, which by the way is three here. And now we have the JSON object. We will do a loop, the while loop, which is keep getting the next row, next row. And uh, for this full follow up, it loops through the number of columns and to get the column result, put it as the JSON object into this JSON uh, array out of the while loop. And at the end, we will get the length of this array, which is equal to how many total uh, rows of this result. Close the, the statement and return this uh, JSON array. By the way, this is really nothing to do with Redis at this moment. And you can certainly, if you choose to use the string, it will be totally fine. So you don't have to use JSON. You just, uh, in many cases, JSON is much easier to use here. That's one important thing. I do declare a time to live value. This is for Redis key. So by default, Redis, every key of Redis have um, a life cycle. And here I use, I well, this is, the file, let me change it to 10 just for me to easily to demonstrate later, very too short. So by doing that, you literally will see how I use this constant to set up each key. Now we have it and we will use this uh, environment variable to set up the access. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, for this particular Redis server, I choose to enable to access without passcode access. So that means I didn't set up a password. And uh, so any, um, all the application within the same VPC can access this uh, Redis server without a passcode. 
Okay, since I already have VPC protect and this uh, testing environment, it should be okay. And for MySQL, I do need to have this uh, uh, endpoint and also have the username as I show the password, the, the DB name to access there. Okay, set up the Redis connection. As always, I grab the environment variable, which by the way, we just show you how we set up it, which is in the bash RC. And uh, we do a connection. And here, it just do a testing to see whether we access or not, okay? Now set up these MySQL connections. The same thing here, set up, grab all the uh, environment, uh, environmental variable. And I will get the first SQL query using the scanner. By the way, here, because a simple demonstration, I didn't test whether this query is a valid SQL query, and it will through a error message and terminate this whole program if the, 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 the input string is not a valid query, okay? Now, in a try, because we set up a connection, just try to collect, to catch all the exceptions. So we get this MySQL connect, uh, collector connection. Uh, in this program, I will use the passcode, exit, or quit. So if I do want to quit this while loop, here we will get the result from Redis, from Redis cache, use the query string. This query string it will eat the key, the key value part of the key in Redis. So if the result is not now, means we have a hit. That means we grab the result directly from Redis cache and get the result. If not, we know it's not in the cache, the cache means what happened, Let's go call that method we just discussed earlier to get the whole result. And because the whole result is a JSON array, so I use the two string here and uh, to really kind of serialize that. So when the result it come from MySQL, that bring out the result. Here it's important. Since it's not currently in, um, in cache yet, that's send that result in cache. In this setter, the query is the key, the result is the value. Both is the string data type. And regardless where this particular key value set up uh, is come from, um, the, the particular query result come from Redis or come from MySQL, we will set up this TTL. Oh, by the way, we just changed that from five to 10. Okay. So that if the cache come from, um, if the result come from writing the cache, that means we can, we reset of the clock. So you have another 10 seconds to leave. If the result comes directly from, um, MySQL, we also set the, uh, the, the life cycle for 10 seconds here. And here we ask for the next SQL query. Scan here. And if something wrong, well, we will show an uh, error message. So that pretty much it of this whole query. Since we just changed that value, I like to do a compile to make sure everything okay. Hope it works. No, I cannot do it yet. I cannot run it because remember, I didn't really set up the username and the password in batch RC yet. Okay, let's make a stop and I will.